بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد من dedicates his efforts his energy his potential way he sees benefit either in dunya or akhira in the eyes of the people of the world what sparkles the gold the silver the dollars the pounds that is the ultimate prize so most of the voyages wars revolutions deception murder disloyalty betrayal it has happened in history was because of the sparkle of dunya zuyyina lin nasi hubbu shahawat min an nisa wal banin that the love for once for craving it has been embellished it has been beautified this this beauty this augmentation the love for women for offspring for heaps of gold and silver wal qanatir al muqantara min al dhahab wal fidda wal khayl al musawwama and branded horses etc so this has been beautified and that's the motivation for people in the world all the time so to regulate the scanal self allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us instructions how to utilize it properly so not only to abstain but if you do indulge what's the permissible so ulama say that ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned first min nisa the first trial and test will be with regards to women ma taraktu ba'di fitnatan i did not leave behind me a test adarra ala ar-rijal min an-nisa mutamtin to men than women so a person can engage and indulge in the wrong avenues or do it the halal way so if a person does it with the intention of pious children getting close to allah preserving his chastity then this is encouraged wa inna khayra hadhihi al-ummati man kana akthara nisa the best of my ummah are those who have the most wives likewise nabi alayhi salam said ad dunya mata' this is the world of pleasure and enjoyment wa khayru mata'iha al-mar'atu as-saliha but the peak of the pleasures which allah has given a person is a pious righteous wife nabi alayhi salam himself has said hubbiba ilayya an-nisa wa at-tayyib i've been made to be attracted to women and perfume wa ju'ilat qurratu ayni fi as-salah and salah has been made the coolness to my eyes so we need to get deen right dunya will always be imperfect full of flaws no matter where we arrive in life It was a middle-aged housewife who decided to donate all her old clothes in charity. The husband sees her very busy with her wardrobe. He says, what are you doing? The wife says, I'm gathering up all the old clothes and I need you. I need your help. What for? Can we drop them off at the charity? So the husband now groaning, moaning and worried that, you know what, if I do give it in charity, there'll be a space in a wardrobe. It's going to cost me an arm and a leg. I don't have any left. So he said just keep them you never know when you might need them so the wife saying you know what there are so many poor people out there they are starving they need the clothes it will be better that i give it away so they can use it it will come to some good use rather than me using it randomly and i know i don't need it anymore so the husband obviously you need to win the debate so he says my beloved darling anyone who fits in your clothes is definitely not starving anyone who fits in your clothes is definitely not starving so that dunya it will never be perfect we need to get our akhirat perfect the arifin mashayikh say khafilla ala qadri qudratihi alayka ya allah proportionate to his control command authority over you allah is controlling us he controls everything he's watching every movement So he deserves to be obeyed. Wastahi min Allah ala qadri qurbihi minka 
and be humble, be shy, be cautious of transgressing Allah's limits based on your relationship with Him. We don't have a relationship with Allah. That's why it's easy to break Allah's commands. The muttaqeen have a relationship with Allah. Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah say, إِذَا غَرِقَ الْقَلْبُ فِي الْمُبَاهِ أَظْلَمْ فَكَيْفَ بِالْحَرَامِ If this heart drowns in permissible actions, it may become dark and enveloped with darkness. It will become black and blackened. فَكَيْفَ بِالْحَرَامِ what will happen when a person engages in haram? How dark will it heart become? We are told as a volcano that's erupting, forget going near it. Even at a distance, the flights are blocked, the air routes are diverted. That is haram. So the normal things which are permissible, tell the child, don't go near the pool. That's mubah. Ibrahim bin Adham rented a horse, he was going to a destination, his wife fell. He tied his animal and then walked back, somebody seen him said, Why didn't you just take a U-turn and then fetch the whop? Why did you walk all the distance? He said, I rented the animal one way to go from point A to B. If I had to take a U-turn, it would have been oppression and zulm. I would have made ta'addi. It would have been impermissible in Sharia. So the pious people were cautious about their good actions. There's no shortfall. And they did it with istiqama. Other people are particular about their evil. What a zamana. The pious were particular about good. And they didn't want any shortfall. And they did it with istiqama. Now we are particular about evil. We do it properly. We make a good job of it. We do it with istiqama. Looking male, looking for a female, age so and so, complexion so and so, married, unmarried, customized guna. So the Mashaykh had his tiqamat. Sa'id ibn Musayyib rahimallah said, Ma fatat nil takbirat al ula. That not even takbir ula was compromised mundu khamsin a sana for 50 years. And you said, Salla Sa'id al Ghalad bi wudu il Atma. For 50 years he read Isha and Fajr with the same wudu. So, persons on the road to Allah will notice every small deficiency and try to remedy it. Those whose hearts are overwhelmed with darkness and dhulma won't bother them. One guna, another guna, another guna. It won't affect a person. So, Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah say, إِذَا وَجَدْتَ ظُلْمَةً فِي قَلْبِكَ بَعْدَ مَعْسِيَةٍ اِرْتَكَبْتَهَا If you find some darkness in your heart after committing a sin and you perceive that darkness, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ فِي قَلْبِكَ نُورًا Then know that there's light in your heart. لَوْ لَاهُ لَمَا وَجَدْتَ تِلْكَ الظُّلْمَةً there wasn't any light, you wouldn't have perceived that darkness. So even a small flaw, an area of doubt, a person stays far away, a muttaqi embarks to know what Allah likes and what Allah dislikes, not what the people are like, how many thumbs up, uh, what's my fame on social media, and the likes of people, what are the likes of Allah, for the Allah you say, رَحْبَةُ الْمَرْءِ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ عِلْمِهِ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ The fear and apprehension to break any command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proportionate to your knowledge of Allah. So a person will want to know, will be avarous, what's going to make my Allah happy, what's going to make my Allah unhappy. So the niyah of taqwa, tilawat of Qur'an, and among those niyat of taqwa is such taqwa that Allah will protect me from the plotting of shaitan. Inna al-ladhina taqaw idha massahum ta'ifum min ash-shaytani When the evil thought of shaitan, when this anger, when the whispers of Iblis cross their mind, when they intend to do a sin, commit a guna, تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْصِرُونَ They remember Allah, they remember Adab, they remember Akhirat. 
They remember the reward of staying away from guna. They remember the promises of Allah. They remember the warnings of Allah. They make tawbah, they repent, they turn to Allah, they seek re refuge. And they ask Allah for forgiveness so that they, before they die, they clear their books with Allah. Iblis is mentioned 11 places in the Quran. 768 ayat about Iblis and his plotting. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah has dedicated an entire kitab, Talbis Iblis, over 400 pages on just describing how shaitan will dissuade a person from the sirat -e mustaqim He has mentioned the six stages of plotting. One is he pay, takes a person to kufr and shirk, he does not accept Islam. Secondly, he accepts Islam but is engaged in bid'ah, firaqa batila. So he'll never make tawbah his entire life. He thinks so he's on haq, but he's on batil. Thirdly, he will engage a person in guna -e kabira. You are a Muslim, you are worshipping Allah. Allah is ghafoorur rahim. Fourthly, he engages him in small gunas, the small bait where you will draw the big bait, the quick sand. Fourthly, he will engage him in permissible actions and he will waste his time. Cricket is permissible, the muftis have gave permission, the men are covered. And in, in, in brackets we say they don't show the most prettiest girls in the audience. It's permissible, nothing wrong. Go to the mall, we can do shopping. You know, I need to make amal on the dhikr when you go to the bazaar, you'll get so much reward. So permissible things. I need to catch up at the times, I need to watch news. Uh, lady presenter is in Parla and there's no music in the background. So through permissible means in our eyes, in our perception, Shaitan takes away a person to Gunai Sagira and then Kabira and eventually Ukfur, he takes a person to Kufr. And the last stage is A Yushkhil al Insan bil Amal al Mavdul Amma huwa Avdal Minhu. So he will take you from one Amal to another Amal. You will think so you're doing good. Now you write in a Shaitan la yaftahu lil Abd. Shaitan opens for a person 99 doors lil khair yuridu bi baba min al He opened 99 doors of good to get you to that one door of evil and that door never closes. In the words of Mali Rasmali, the Nurani hijab. We leave a exemplary amal for another amal. All amal are good. But what's the taqaza? What's the command of Allah at that time? The Nurani hijab. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalan Rahmanullah was once deeply involved in Ibadah. Shaitan appeared with a grand throne, brilliantly shining, surrounding. And Ethan Rizbaw said, Oh Abdul Qadir, I am your Lord. I've made lawful for you what's haram. So the Shaykh said, Awud billahi min ash shaytanir wajim. Uh, uh, can they be in Allah, uh, Ghayrullah? A'udhu Billah! Tasapya Shaitan! So the voice came and said, You have succeeded, I have dispelled so many 70 saintly worshippers by this action. Your ilm has saved you. Iblis said, your ilm has saved you. Again he said, A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytanir rajim It is not my understanding and knowledge of deen that has saved me, it is Allah. So shaitan never gives up. You thought so you warn him, he doesn't give up. Iblis is the one who is matrood min rahmatillah. He has been thrown far away from the mercy of Allah and he'll want to take a person far away from the mercy of Allah. So when a person gets the taqwa, then they are preserved and they are protected. What an accolade for a person who has been given a protection from all these plottings of Iblis and Shaitan. So a narration in uh, Kanzul Umal and Ibn Asakir is mentioned in his tariq. Uh, in the time of Azad Umar radiallahu there was a youngster who was devoted and very engaged in ibadah, always in the masjid. So Umar was impressed. After Aisha, he should go to his father and en route ala babi imratin. He used to pass by a, 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 a beautiful young 
a damsel and uh, this woman try to flaunt and try to infatuate and 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 convince him to to fall prey to her calls so that whatsapp messages came that that pop ups that the secret letters that secret does secret that they trying to convince you from a zalat to we hatta tabia that she tried and she persisted she made effort to seduce him until he fell so that night she invited him and she ent- he entered through her door and uh, as he got close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he remembered allah this evil intention disappeared from him instantly so you are alone what somebody there's nobody at home parents are gone you are alone for the weekend you went for a drive you picked up you are alone in that moment tadhakkaru fa idha hum mubsirun he remembered this ayah of the quran in alladhina taqaw that when the people of taqwa shaitan tries to trap them and tempt them they engage in dhikr they remember allah they remember the adab of allah they remember the punishments of allah fa idha hum mubsirun and the eyes open up fa qarra al fata makhshiyan alayhi he fell unconscious so the woman then called for a servant for help they carried him to the door of his house He was made to sit at the door when the father came to look for him he found me unconscious outside he summoned the family members they gathered him in took him inside when he regained consciousness at a later part of the night the father said ya buna ya malaka what has happened he said khair you cannot imagine how allah saved me and protected me fa inni asaluka so tell me what has happened what's the story please tell me your son فأخبر بالأمر he narrated the incident he said أي بني oh my son what ayah did you read so he recited the ayat when again he recited that ayat that that scene that uh, uh, situation came back to him فخر مخشيا عليه and he fell unconscious again and the father tried to revive him فإذا هو ميت His ruh left him. Sahaba, one ayah was sufficient to take out their ruh. We read the entire Quran. Not one drop of tear falls from our eyes. Not one drop falls from our eyes. So the takfin, janaza, everything was prepared, and uh, he was buried. In the morning. Umar radiyallahu anhu was informed about this he went to console the father he said why did you not inform me he said it happened during the night i didn't want to give you inconvenience kan al-layl fa qala umar fadhhabu bina ila qabri let's go now quickly to his qabr fa ata umar wa man ma'ahu umar came to his qabr fa qala umar ya fulan listen well youngster وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The one who fears standing in front of Allah will have two gardens. فَأَجَابَهُ الْفَتَى مِنْ دَاخِلِ الْقَبْرِ The youngster in the qabr gave a reply to Umar and said, يَا عُمَرُ قَدْ أَعْطَانِيهِمَا رَبِّي فِي الْجَنَّةِ مَرَّتَيْنِ O Umar, Allah has given me both these gardens in Jannah. Allah has given me both these gardens in Jannah. May Allah give us the reality and tawfiq for making amal. The amal for today is in the absence of wealth to give sadaqah. Sabaqa dirhamun mi'ata alfi dirham. One dirham surpassed a hundred thousand dirahim. person says how is it possible ya rasulullah he says this person who has given the other thousand has taken a portion of his wealth whereas the other person illa dirhaman fa akhadha duma fa tasaddaqa bihi and from the two he gave one percentage wise who has given more likewise 
He was asked, Ya Rasulullah, ay, oh, Nabi of Allah, ayyu sadaqati awdhal. Which sadaqah is most virtuous? Replied, Juhdul muqil wabda' biman ta'ul. Start with your relatives and the poor person who is able to give sadaqah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ